Welcome back to our podcast, Let's Talk. Today's subject, Pastor, is uh, again, one that we like. It's a Bible subject. Amen. It's one dear to both your heart and mine. Amen. We were trained in this, right? Yep. Yep. From day one, and that is rightly dividing Amen. the word of truth. Amen. Why don't we just start off with what does that mean? Explain to our audience what that means. Well, obviously the verse that we often talk about, uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, the Bible says, mm. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, mm. rightly dividing, yes. not handling, That's good. dividing mm. the word of truth. Yeah. And so really I think the simplest way to put it as we kind of introduce this subject is understanding that God in His sovereignty, first of all, told us in His Word mm -hmm. to rightly divide the Word of Truth. Listen, if it, dispensations wouldn't be an issue or talked about, or, or if, if God didn't even say what He said in His Word, uh, and that is to rightly divide the Word of Truth. Mm -hmm. um, I, I go back to our times with Pastor Blue. You talk mm -hmm. about it near and dear. Yes. Where, you know, after Thursday night, it's 8.30. We'd already worked all day. Yes. We're in the institute. We're over in the education building. We're sitting there, you know, with a group of guys. And he's teaching mm -hmm. hermeneutics. Mm -hmm. And we just ate it up. Yep. And it was kind of like an epiphany, like a key to understanding the Bible. Yep. So if somebody says, you know, what, what does it mean? I think, and going to your question, mm -hmm. the simplest way to put it is, not everything in the Bible, and this is where people freak out, mm -hmm. not everything in the Bible is doctrinally written to you to apply today. Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh, right. my goodness. Right. Well, and then people, they freak out. It's like, well, don't you read your Bible? Right. A, a good example would be uh, when the Bible says to wash your hands seven times before you eat. So I'd say to our listeners, uh, do you do that? Well, no, I don't. Mm. Do you eat pork? Yes, I do, right? There's 630, 13 different commandments mm. given, ordinances right. given to the nation of Israel, to yes. the Jews, which were given to them. So before we're stoned on stage mm. or emailed or berated, mm -hmm. I think we both agree and understand the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Mm -hmm. It's all what? God's Word. Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. It's all profitable. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's all the Word of God, mm -hmm. but not all of it is to be applied to you today. Yeah, and doctrinally, like you said. Right? And doctrinally. The it, principles can the still principles be there. The principles are there. Yeah. Uh, instruction in righteousness is there. Amen. We're, we're, uh, in fact, it kind of leads in why is it so important is the mm -hmm. next question uh, it lends itself along those kinds. It is. It doesn't take away someone's Bible. Amen. It gives them passages they never had before. Exactly. Drink any deadly thing and it shall not hurt you. Right. Right? Mark 16. Well, guess what? You can actually have that passage now because you can place it doctrinally where it belongs. Doesn't right. mean you can go do that. Right. But it does mean you know why yeah. it was said exactly. within the context. So what happens if somebody doesn't rightly divide the word of truth? They look at Mark 16, where it mm -hmm. says, you shall drink any deadly thing and you shall not be harmed. Mm -hmm. And they have to spiritualize it. Yes, right. And they don't really know what to do with it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> I remember uh, years ago, uh, Mary and I had just got married. So this would have been 25 years ago. I had a guy at Costco. Mm. Uh, his name was Paul. And he was a charismatic and I invited him over to my house because we were having these debates at uh, we were having debates at work. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so I sat him down. We had our Bible. We were talking. And I remember looking at him going, listen, I mean this. I am not tempting God. Mm -hmm. I am not tempting God. Maybe I'm lacking faith. And mm -hmm. maybe doctrinally I'm off. Mm -hmm. I said, so I've got some liquid Drano under the sink. Mm -hmm. And I would like you to drink it to show me that this applies in this dispensation. Mm, mm. And of course he freaks out and goes, don't tempt God, don't tempt God. And right. said, no, I'm just, maybe I lack faith. Right. You know, so, uh, and that's just a microcosm yes. of that, that passage mm -hmm. of, of passages. I love what you said. Mm -hmm. Now it doesn't take that away from you. You know who it applies to. Right. It is a kingdom truth. Yes. That is talking to the disciples mm -hmm. 
during the dispensation of the kingdom. Yes. Where the king was there and the apostolic gifts were evident in, in the, the church. church today. Yes. Talk on that a little bit. Yeah. On uh, doesn't rightly divide answer um, uh, uh, apostolic mm. gifts. Yeah. And I'm just glancing at my notes. I, yes. I jotted that down because yeah. I didn't want to miss it. Yes. So, and again, why is it so important? Um, mm -hmm. Understand this. Every heresy is a truth misplaced. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have a group of Christians, and God bless them. I'm not against them. I just happen to doctrinally disagree, right? They are going around and anointing people with oil and for healing, which, fine, I'm not, I'm not actually opposed to that. Whatever you mm -hmm. want to do, but they're taking apostolic gifts and trying to apply them to the church today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Pastor Blue used to always say that one of the greatest contradictions is to have a wheelchair ramp at a Pentecostal church, right? That sounds like Pastor Blue. I love Pastor it. Pastor Blue wrote a wrote hundred different charismatic preachers in the area and Pentecostals in the area in the greater Northwest and asked them, to you know, a whole bunch of series of questions, and he said he got one response, and so Pastor Blue called him, and the guy said, "I can't talk right now because I'm sick." Yeah. Literally, and I'm listen. I I'm I'm not laughing not at you. Talking. I'm laughing yeah. with you. Right. Uh, but but having said that, um, every heresy is a truth misplaced. Mm -hmm. Christians that fail to rightly divide the word of truth run into so many problems. Yes, yep. security of the believer. Mm -hmm. Listen. You don't have to struggle when you read Hebrews 6, mm -hmm. where it says it's impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and of the powers of the world to come, mm -hmm. if they shall fall away, to renew them again under repentance, seeing they crucify the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. People, charismatics will go there and Pentecostals will go there and say, well, you can lose your salvation because you right. fell away. Mm -hmm. Well, don't spiritualize it. Understand mm -hmm. who it's written to. Yes. And I personally believe that's written to a Jew going through the tribulation period. Right. Uh, Matthew 24, he mm -hmm. that endures to the end shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't have to run from that passage. Right. How would you respond if somebody said that to you? Well, he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. What would you tell them? I'd say that that is doctrinally to the Jew going through the tribulation period to where if yep. he endured to the end, he shall be saved. And, it's yeah. and you'd be correct. End of what? <laughs> right. right. That'd be the and, next question. Right. right? And, and by the way, do you want to... I want to be saved. What do I need to endure to the end of? End right. of the day? End, end of the end, hour? Exactly. <laughs> end of my shift at work? Endure to the end. <laughs> right. And how about just the context would really help them there as well? Right. Those that be in Judea, flee to the mountains. Are right. you in Judea? I yeah. pray your... Here's a good one. I, right before it, it says, I pray your flight... Be not on the Sabbath day. Mm, mm. Why would you be worried about in the in this dispensation? Why mm -hmm. would you be worried about the Sabbath? Yeah, that's so good. Paul addresses diets and days. Yep. clearly in Colossians. Uh, nailed to the cross. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Um, last question here. Uh, how will it affect the way we read the? How does it affect the way we read the Bible? How we how we look at the Bible. So again, we're talking about rightly dividing the word of truth. We're talking mm -hmm. about dispensations. Um, I think, first of all, it's a key. It, mm -hmm. it, is a, it, it is, to me, one of the keys to understanding the Bible. It opens up the Bible yes, to you. Yes, it does. It doesn't rob you of passages. It helps you to be able to place them where they need to be. Mm -hmm. And I can't emphasize this enough because a failure to rightly divide the word of truth can lead you into a lot of dark places. Mm -hmm. Covenant theology has stemmed mm -hmm. from a failure to rightly divide the word of truth. Mm -hmm. um, so really it's a key to mm -hmm. answering. Uh, mm -hmm. It's liberating. Yes. It's liberating. Yes. And, and, and we've talked before this. We won't keep, this won't be a long podcast. We just mm -hmm. kind of just hit the, the key points on this. But there's, I believe, kind of seven distinct dispensations, mm -hmm. okay? There's innocence, there's conscience, uh, there's uh, human government, there's patriarchs, uh, there's the law, right? And keep in mind, from Genesis 1-1 to Exodus 20, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the law, 
all those five dispensations are from Genesis 1 1 to Exodus 20, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if you study your Bible, Pastor Kennedy, you, mm -hmm. you see that every dispensation has ended in apostasy. Yes. Yeah. So it does go back to your question, mm -hmm. you know, uh, really, how will it affect you way to read the Bible? You read the Bible. It helps you to understand. To get, well, Exodus 20 goes to the cross. Excuse mm -hmm. me. Exodus 20 goes to the cross. Mm -hmm. Helps you to understand the time frame as well in God's plan. Mm -hmm. Rightly dividing the word of truth will help you to see what God is doing in the world today mm -hmm. from a nu numerology standpoint. Mm -hmm. So if Exodus 20 went all the way to the cross, mm -hmm. I'll give an example. When you read the Gospels, mm -hmm. for example, you understand John the Baptist was kind of an Old Testament prophet. Yes. And he's not preaching the same gospel that Paul preached. And I know this mm -hmm. is heresy to many mm -hmm. of the brethren. Mm -hmm. Find in the Bible where John the Baptist ever preached the death, burial, and resurrection. resurrection. Right. He didn't. Right. He said in Matthew 3, 7, O you generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Mm -hmm. Repent and be baptized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So right. if you got up yeah. Sunday morning and mm -hmm. preached, repent and be baptized, mm -hmm. okay, for the remission of sins, mm -hmm. well, that is not the gospel of the death, burial, mm -hmm. and resurrection. Mm -hmm. So to take it a step further as we close, the 12 disciples did not preach the death, burial, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. They didn't preach it. Mm -hmm. A good example would be this. Luke 18, Jesus foretold his death, his burial, and his resurrection. He told it to his disciples. And the disciples, it says this in uh, Luke 18, 38. He says, they understood none of these things. Mm -hmm. What do you mean they didn't understand? They didn't understand that Christ was going to be crucified and buried and rose again. They thought he was bringing in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. They were talking about who's going to sit Even on Even his... rebuked by Peter when the Lord told him to his face. Right. 100%. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they understood none of these mm -hmm. things. Matter of fact, it says, neither they knew the things which were spoken. Mm -hmm. Matthew 10, Jesus preached, repent and be baptized. Mm -hmm. So the gospel message mm -hmm. changed when Jesus Christ was crucified. Mm -hmm. Because there the law was fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Colossians says that, that uh, the, write, the, the writing of ordinances, mm -hmm. which were against us, were nailed to the cross. Amen. He blotted them out. Yes. Now the law is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. well, what happened, Pastor Kennedy, mm -hmm. after Christ was crucified? Who came on the scene? The Apostle Paul. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Where did that happen? In Acts chapter number 7 at the stoning of Stephen and then Acts 9 at the saving of Paul and then Amen. 13 heading out. Yeah, absolutely. And Paul becomes the apostle to the Gentiles, yep. bringing the gospel of the grace of God Amen. to us. And, 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 and by the grace of God, we've heard it and received it. Amen. Correct. Yes. Yep. A good way to put it for those listening today, I think, is to understand that when, when John the Baptist came on the scene and preached, repent for the kingdom is at hand. Mm -hmm. they, they, what did they do? They cut the head off of John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ came and preached in Matthew 10, repent for the kingdom is hand, at hand. They crucified him. Acts 7, Stephen shows up. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And he preaches a scathing message mm -hmm. to the Jews for, to repent for the crucifying of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, the Bible says in Acts 7 that Jesus Christ was standing, not sitting, standing yes. at the right hand of God, waiting for the nation of Israel to repent. Yeah, key passage, yeah. And, and what did they do to Stephen? Mm -hmm. They stoned him. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, obviously Saul holding the garments and all that mm -hmm. took place. I, I love what Jason Lowe Baxter said about the book of Acts. He said it's about the renewed offer of the, uh, of the kingdom of heaven to the nation of Israel. Mm, that's it's kind good. of a good, yeah. it's a transitional book. Yes. So in Acts, you mentioned it, mm -hmm. Acts 8, mm -hmm. Acts 9, mm -hmm. Saul shows up, not Paul, mm -hmm. Saul, mm -hmm. road to Damascus. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul is saved, Amen. miraculously mm -hmm. saved. Mm -hmm. Acts 9, 15, 
the Bible says that God said of, of Saul, go thy way. For thou art a chosen vessel unto me to bear mm. my name before the kings and before the, uh, before the uh, Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Take the gospel of the grace of God. Mm -hmm. So I believe, Pastor yes. Kennedy, that God took, God's not done with the Jews. Mm -hmm. He took the nation of Israel mm -hmm. and temporarily set yes. them aside. Yes. He took the apostolic gifts and temporarily set them aside mm -hmm. and started something brand new, mm -hmm. which was never revealed in the Old Testament. Right. Right. That is Ephesians 3. Mm -hmm. That is which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, Paul said, but now revealed unto me. What is that? Mm -hmm. That Jew and Gentile would be in the same body. It's the church. It's the mystery mm. that was never revealed. Amen. That's why Romans 9, 10, and 11 deal those, with those parenthetical chapters dealing with the nation of Israel right in the middle there. Mm -hmm. We say all that to say this. Rightly dividing the word of truth will unlock your Bible mm -hmm. to you. Yes. yes. As we so close good. today, Pastor Kennedy, anything <clears throat> else come to mind as we think about Right, dividing the word of truth. What what advice would you give folks as we close today? You know, probably the, the first thing that comes to mind when it's rightly dividing the word of truth is being able to recognize and understand the revelation of the mystery committed to the Apostle Paul. Once you understand what our epistles are doctrinally for us today, I think it answers a lot of questions on where the church fits into the whole program of God. Right. Amen. And um, so I would say that understanding the revelation of the mystery, understand you're in the dispensation of the grace of God. God's not reoffering the kingdom. Correct. God is building his church, the body of Christ, one by one. Yep. One here, one there, and one there. Mm -hmm. And one day he'll call it out. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I'm looking forward to it. Amen. <laughs> and when he does call it out, he jump starts his program with the nation of Israel there you go. again. Yep. A good little study I'll give you to challenge you. Study, study uh, Mark chapter five, and you'll see a beautiful picture of the Syrophoenician woman. Mm, mm. And you have uh, the well, you have the woman with the issue of blood, mm -hmm. and you have how God started with the Jew there at the beginning. All of a sudden, this woman with the issue of blood touches his garment. He stops, he heals her, and then he goes back to Jairus' house and finishes with him. Mm -hmm. It's a good picture of your entire Bible. I believe we're a picture of that church that comes right in. We're mm -hmm. that woman with the issue of blood that just, you know, touches his garment and gets in there. And that's the Gentiles right in between. That is your mm, Bible good. from beginning to end. That's good. That's good. You know, for the sake of our audience, uh, right before we get ready to wrap it up is... You know, if these things are new to you and you've never heard them before, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'd feel safe. I know you would recommend it. I'd recommend it. Good place to start is Larkin's Dispensational Truth Book. Amen. Just a good place to start. Amen. It's, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's infallible. Right, it's very good. <laughs> it's not the Bible, but it's a great start for our people if, if they want that resource. Yeah. Yeah, it's so funny. I had writing my, just a couple notes I wrote yeah. down. I literally, God is my witness, I had said, Make sure you tell the people and mm. recommend Clarence Larkin. Oh, perfect. Because we both, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, we kind of, it's, to me, yes. it's one of the greatest books I ever read outside of the Bible. Yes, absolutely. Rightly yeah. Dividing the Word of Truth, yeah. written in 1909. He was an architect. He mm. was not a pastor. He was an architect. And uh, he dedicated that book to the Holy Spirit, the divine interpreter. Yeah. And I encourage you to read that book. And uh, it'll, it's enlightening. It'll mm. help you very much. Yeah, so, yeah, Pastor Kennedy, thank yes, you for the questions. I want to thank those for tuning in today. I hope that you enjoyed this video podcast. I encourage you to share it with folks. Uh, subscribe if you have not. Like the video. And uh, let us know if you have any other topics you'd like us to discuss. God bless you and thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day.